All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean. This is In The Mix as we continue our Hashtag United series in Football Manager 2019, episode 43, already underway. In the last episode, I was knackered. I was tired. I was frustrated. Our results were shit, but I'm in a much better frame of mind right now because we have potentially the biggest game of the series thus far, our Emirates FA Cup third round game against Crystal Palace. Now, it is way earlier than I said we were going to come back and do the next episode because I thought, this is a massive game. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to play it off screen. We got a home tie. Crystal Palace are absolutely flying in the championship, not the Premier League, the championship at the moment. Let's go and have a quick look at their squad. They've got some phenomenal players. They've got a 24 and a 21 million pound centre-back pairing. Uh, Edson Alvarez is kind of a beast. I actually don't know much about him other than he's a Mexican international. With Club America, then with Benfica. So he's been around a little bit. 64 pinces now for Crystal Palace as they are storming up the championship table into second spot they've got Dujon Sterling who's a great Chelsea junior you can pick up in the game Max Meyer is at 40 million pound value Emile Smith Rowe on a wing Rian Brewster up front Felix Metra on the bench Calvert Lewin's on the bench Jonathan Panzo is not even in the squad I've signed him from somewhere oh it's Monaco isn't it they signed him from Ipswich but yeah he starts the season and the league at Monaco he's a phenomenal talent if you can get him early in the game just a great squad like they've got a fair few high potential players that they've picked up throughout the course of the journey they're paying Max Meyer 140,000 pound a week which is just insane so it's going to be a massive fixture for us we have the worst fans in the division and by that I mean like we have the fewest amount of fans in the division real quickly we'll go through uh, how we've been doing our form has been shit not going to lie to you guys, I think in the last episode we played Forest Green and then had that really heavy defeat against Aldershot. Um, we turned it around against Stockport in the FA Cup second round, which was our last uh, competition game in the FA Cup. We've been in a shitty run since then. A 3-1 defeat to Macclesfield. They were 22nd in the league, I think, at the time. Uh, we played Chester away. They're still top of the division and running away with it. They beat us 4-1. We then mixed it up a bit, kind of started to change our shape and formation a little. Won 3 nil against Tranmere, brought straight back down to earth with a 2-1 defeat against Boston in the FA Trophy. I thought we had done all right getting revenge against Hartlepool for a th heavy 3-1 nil defeat early in the season. But then, just same old story, back to Boreham Wood and we lost convincingly, only pulling a goal back in the 93rd minute. I just can't really decide on our best team. We've been playing with the positive mentality still. We've been moving some stuff around. We're going to go cautious for this episode. And for this game against Crystal Palace. And then we've also got down the track, Salford, who are in third spot. Telford, who are in fifth spot, even though we beat them 6-1 early in the season. Dartford are in 14th. So we're probably going to keep cautious for at least the next three games and then see where we're doing for the Dartford results, see where we're doing for the Cambridge results. They won't be in this episode, but it's just where my head's at. I've had some player movements most of them are old ones, but Scott Gibbons has moved to Coventry on a free transfer. Jacob White, we actually transfer listed and got 10.25k for him. It's great. I think he's the most expensive player we've ever sold. Uh, he came to me complaining about the club's financial structure, and I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to get rid of some players, talking about the four that we had in the under-23s to raise some funds. And he said, no, that's not good enough. And then he went AWOL and went missing from training for a week. So, like, I just couldn't be bothered with him anymore. I put him on the transfer list. Thankfully, York were able to come in and offer him some actual money for him. Uh, so we do get a return on our investment there. Now trying to tidy up a couple of the players that haven't been playing and potentially didn't have as high morale. Now that we're into January, the 1st of January, funnily enough, getting a bit more of a condensed squad of 18 or 19. So Luke Nunn has come in. We actually looked at Luke Nunn during the last pre-season, but we just couldn't get his wage demands down. Of course, six months without football is going to make anyone kind of reduce their demands. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. Decent as both a deep lying playmaker on defend and as an okay box to box. We're playing him in that role when he's fit. Of course, on his debut, he got himself sent off after 20 minutes. So, you know, that's gone fantastically well so far. One that we currently have on trial, and I haven't got, been able to get him to enter contract negotiations yet, and Roach, who we would use as a deep lying forward on support. Arsenal Jr., Nancy was ever going to come here even on trial during off-season. But, you know, six months without football can do anything to anyone. Four and a half star current ability, five star potential. Let's just see if we can get him to have a chat with us now. Not interested, even though I've got about £800 to work with. We still are working on our reduced budget from the start of the season. But what I've done is the guys that aren't going to be hanging around, the guys that are at the end of their contract at the end of the season, we've told them that they're not going to get their contracts renewed, which is why it's showing that we have wage budget available and ready to allocate. Financially, a big spike up back up here. We're now only at negative 585000 which I know sounds bad, but it's pretty good for where we've been at. 
It's due to prize money that we've gotten through our FA Trophy run, which we're now out of with that defeat to Boston, uh, and of course getting through to the third round of the FA Cup. Ties in the Cup competition is a little bit higher this season, has kind of given us an extra 200k, give or take. But I do expect that once we, like, let's be honest, we're probably not getting past Crystal Palace. I doubt that very much that's going to happen unless they rotate heavily in disaster strikes. We will probably still end up down again towards the end of this season unless we get some more prize money, unless we have some more money come through through another revenue stream that we haven't really thought of. It sells to a good position. Most of the squad is on two-year deals, so they've got another season after this, which means the wage budget will stay at around the same rate. We've got guys that we can offboard at the end of this season if they aren't fulfilling their potential or if we can get upgrades, and we get to go back into the free transfer market again. So at the end of the season, we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff that we can do to try and continue to head in the right direction financially, and hopefully the football will keep up with it as well. Somehow, despite our really shitty form, we are still sitting seventh, just, just barely by the skin of our teeth in the playoff positions. Uh, Billericke are on equal points, but a lower goal difference. Boreham Wood, who actually beat us uh, only one point behind. Hartlepool and Tranmere, Leighton Orient, like they're all within three, four, five points of us. Then there's a little bit of a gap of four points down to 13th. Realistically, we are really struggling to get through these games. This is a massive issue for these young players. And the training part-time is a massive issue as well. So like we're kind of hitting a precipice of we've just got to get through our games and hopefully everyone gets the boost in their current ability out so it's easy to read gets the boost in their current ability by playing the remaining games for this season so what i think we're going to do is once we get past this game against crystal palace and we know that there's just league games to play through is jump ahead towards the end of the season for the next episode and maybe play through the remaining 12 games maybe get to the game against forest green or if we think we have playoffs coming up the game against kidderminster uh and see how we finish the season up of course if something massive happens and we get through uh, that all goes out the window because I'm sure we'll get another home fixture and another really big opponent, hopefully a London-based team, similar to Crystal Palace, to hopefully get some fans in the door. But enough talking from me. Let's jump ahead and have a look at the two lineups for the game. They have gone with a very, very strong lineup, which is crazy. They've got Farinez in goal, Alvarez and Godfrey, who we spoke about beforehand, as their central defensive partnership. Two regens in Pickwell and Stevenson as their fullbacks. Campbell and Svanberg will anchor midfield. Maximilian Meyer, the 40 million pound man, is their captain and will play at the 10. Smith Rowe on the left wing. Sterling on the right. Ryan Brewster up top. They've got a whole bunch of phenomenal players on the bench. <laughs> oh, we're fucked. But anyway, it's fine. Uh, we're going with our 4 4 2. With pretty much the same team that you guys saw in the last lineup. It's a bit of a throwback central midfield pairing uh, with White leaving the club. And we're also selling Sergeant Bobby McGee. Sergeant McGee, I get that wrong every fucking time. George Urie and uh, Hyam will play as the central midfield partnership. They know the roles that they're doing. It's like, look, to be honest, we we're going to be pushing shit uphill regardless of what happened in this game, so we might as well play the two of them, give them some time together, and then hopefully when none comes back from his suspension, we can get him into the starting lineup a bit more. On the wing ahead of Kiembe, we've just been rotating those two depending on form and fitness. I'm just here to enjoy this one. I'm not stressing too much about the result in this game. I'm not going to let it stress me out. It is crazy to think when we went back to those first few episodes, like playing like Brightling Sea Regents reserve side, that we would eventually get to a point where we're playing anybody at a championship or even Premier League level. So um, I'm just kind of thrilled to be finally playing against some name brand teams. No disrespect to anybody in the Van Rama National, but like it's when you get to a uh, big level competition. There we go. So regardless of when we see a result here, I'm actually keen to see what the crowd is like in this match because we've had horrific crowds. I think we're averaging less than 500 at home games this season. Here's Smith Rowe on the seventh minute, finds Brewster at the top of the box, gets his strike away, but it's come back out to him again. He's crowded out, and I think Fitzpatrick, Yuri trips Brewster. We had about seven guys around him, so at least everyone's trying to get back. And this will be interesting to see how Dennis goes at the spot. Or oh, he dove out of the way of it. I don't blame him. Probably had a bit of a cannon on him, does Ryan Brewster. Only his 13th goal of the season, which um, kind of a weird one because he's like a proper five-star potential player at the start of the game. You'd think being about 23, 24 at current season in the game, he'd be uh, smashing goals in for fun. But there it is. We've taken a 1-0, not lead, uh, deficit. Scoreline to Crystal Palace from the penalty spot. It's not like they scored a scream or anything. And I paid absolutely no attention to the replay. Did it look like there was much of a crowd there? I'm sure we're going to see more goals. And we just had a shot and it was on target. So I'm going to praise everybody and see how they respond. 
That was a mistake. I should have demanded more. Oh, uh, here, pick well from distance. He gets it on target, but Dennis does well. Hyam's got time. He can play it up the line if he wants. We've got kind of a 2v2 back there. But instead, the highlight ends. We've had a second shot, a second shot on target. That's progress. We're getting possession back as well. It's 58% to 42%. Only 1 0 down. It's not the worst in the world. They've had 15 shots, 8 of them on target, 59% possession, to be expected. We've had 2, 2, and 41%. It's actually not that bad considering the one goal that they've scored was from a penalty and a silly giveaway penalty in the first 10 minutes. So I'm just going to go out and praise everybody and just say passionately, uh, keep it up. Everyone seems to respond positively. I don't think, like, I think they will score again. I don't think we can get for the full 90 minutes against anybody at the moment and keep it to one goal, but there's certainly a lot to be encouraged by. And I was going to say, is that just the highlight for the kickoff? And it was in the end, but for a second I just sat, like, sat there gobsmacked thinking, are we actually going to have a highlight here? But no, it wasn't meant to be. But like, that's something, you can take something away from that. Down towards their end, I was hoping maybe they'd cough it up. Norman with a good header. Comes to Haim now, to Waring on the right. Waring, Waring, I call him a different name every time I say it. To Yuri now, forward to Rodriguez, cuts inside, finds Dick Thrash, and Keith Mir has equalised. What is going on? 20th goal of the season for him. Entirely against the run of play, entirely undeserved. Alright, Waring here finds Haim to Yuri. Yuri plays a good ball forward to Rodriguez, who cuts inside, plays a little one to Dick Thrash. Dick Thrash strikes, I think, but it falls to Keith Mir, and first time he puts it in the back of the net. Are we about to see the upset of the season? I don't want to change anything. After 57 minutes, Rodriguez and O'Neill are on yellow cards. Neither has played poorly. I mean, they haven't played well. They're on like 6.6s, but that's pretty good. I have faith in you. Get out there and make the difference. Okay, it's work with Chance Okiembe. And he loves when we're recording. Also, just use our praise shout. Doing anything. I learned my lesson from the last episode. Don't get ahead of yourself. Just focus on up to the minute decision making. And what happens at the end of 90 minutes is what happens at the end of 90 minutes. Holy shit. I mean, Keith Muir is immediately the best player on the pitch for the 7.1. I don't know how we're limiting some of their players. They've made a couple of subs now as well. Rotating out Campbell and Meyer. The 40 million pound man is off the pitch. Barnett with the deep one and Nemecha from about four yards out heads over, thank Christ. I thought they'd give us more trouble from set pieces. Like, it's amazing to me. Then, oh, no, I've got to stop doing it. I've got to stop getting ahead of myself. 73 minutes gone. We're going to bring on Ash Bolton for Fitzpatrick, who's been struggling with both fitness and his match rating. And I know how big Bolton is. He's about six foot nine or something crazy like that, or 100, 200 centimeters. So we'll bring him on, and we'll see if that can help shore us up for the last 20 minutes or so. Match rating, which is like he must be having just the game of his life. I haven't seen anything in terms of highlights other than what you guys have seen. The shout and Pickwell puts that one into the side netting. Should I demand more? Should I risk it all? Demand more is about 50-50 at the moment with immediately the other team getting a highlight as soon as I use it. But we're in the last 10 minutes. I just want focus. So let's try and demand more and see if that makes everyone focused. Body language. Let's see what we get. So three, two people are focused after the feedback. Dick Thrash is pressured by it. Dick Thrash also getting credit for an assist. I'm pretty sure he just shot and it deflected into Keith Mee's path, but... We haven't had an immediate highlight, which of course are famous last words because I know Sports Interactive listens in every time I have the microphone turned on. 85th minute, or 87th minute, sorry. Kiembe is coming forward, out to Bolton. It's a deep ball across towards Keith Mir, and he's just put that one past the near post. That was the opportunity. Oh, good Lord. And they're playing it forward to Nemecha. Takes a touch forward, strike from distance is only just wide. Pretty sure the computer had a meltdown as well. Skipped a couple of frames there as that one was going through. Four minutes to be added on. Can we hold on for four more minutes after doing it so well for 90? They've had 29 shots, 13 on target, 57% of the ball. But it remains 1-1. Oh, 
want to hear Barnett to take. It's away by Norman and away by Yuri. We had a 2v2 up there, but the referee calls full time. That is a phenomenal result. How can we concede three to Boreham Wood and then draw 1-1 with Crystal Palace? That is absolutely insane. Of course, their goal from a penalty, as you guys saw. Keith Mir with fantastic equaliser in the 55th minute. We ended with 10 shots, 6 on target, 44% possession. They had 30, 13, and 56. We kept them at bay. So at least we know that cautious tactic actually works really well when you're a minnow. But why are we so bad at being... like? Why are we so bad at that tactic at a league level, um, passionately? You've done brilliantly to come back and salvage your draw. I'm proud of you. Everyone's responded positively. I think that means we have a replay in three days. Which you might as well put on. I don't really care. Like, we could lose that 10 nil for all I care. 1-1. One, one. Absolutely insane. Bradford and Middlesbrough drew in the other game as well. I think they're both currently in the championship. Yep, that sounds pretty much correct. Taylor Dennis ended up getting the Man of the Match award with 8 saves and a 7.2 match rating. It's so hard for goalkeepers to get good match ratings in this game. One of, like As we're getting into the build-up of FM20, I really hope they find a way to balance out Natural defenders, uh, and also for goalkeepers as well. Like what he must like that's a ten. If this was like a Sun paper or so, oh not Sun paper, that's a terrible example. There's a paper in Melbourne called the Herald Sun. That's the one I was talking about, not the other shit Sun. Like Taylor Dennis keeping Crystal Palace to one goal from the penalty spot. That is fucking heroic. Arranged, which makes me think. We're still playing the Salford game, and then we're going to come back and play the Crystal Palace game, and we might as well do that in this episode. So I'm going to go and skip ahead past the game against Salford, and then we'll, of course, have Magic of Editing. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so quick recap. We drew with Salford during the week. Also, Taylor Dennis with the Man of the Match performance and a 7.4 rating. So he's in some decent form at the moment. Uh, so two concerns for us, the first being that Luke Nunn's initial one-game suspension has been expended for another two because it was straight red cards. So that was really disappointing. And then George Urie picked up a knock in the Salford game. He actually only played a half. Oliver Hyam only played a half. O'Neill and Rodriguez both sat out. Keith Meir only played a half, like we tried to rotate as much as we could for that game, and we've done rest days since. But you can see Fitzpatrick and Waring are still in need of long-term rest. And because we're playing a high-division team, like you can see a lot more red on here. Which is fine, like, eh, it is what it is. It's just because we're a lower division side, I think. But it's essentially going to be the same starting lineup going into this game as went into the last. Right, so they've made a couple of changes. They've got a new centre back in Hefele coming in who looks like he's ex Nottingham Forest. Sterling moves to right back instead of right fullback. Brewster moves out to the right wing, and Calvert Lewis comes in at the top leading the line, and whoever Bateman is, the left wing regen, he'll come in, as well as Anderson in midfield, so a couple of different changes that they've done, but I think they might just be regular squad rotation, I don't think it's anything too crazy, or too many people getting left out, they've of course got 40 million pound man, Maximilian Meyer as their captain, passionately, we've got nothing to lose, let's, we know how good we are, let's show everyone what we're capable of, a couple have responded really well, I'm going to specifically talk to the defence, and just say, I have faith in you, get out there and make a difference. And away we go at Selhurst Park. Probably the biggest game of the series thus far. But like I said before we went into it, I don't really care if we lose 10-0. And they've got a corner here immediately. It's to Calvert-Lewin. It's coming back out to Meyer again. Deep ball across, Fitzpatrick heads away. Only as far as Anderson at the top of the box. Ball across to Brewster. And we've hacked it away. Mir's going to sneak in front, but Sterling gets a ball straight back in towards Waring. Only as far as Bateman, the regen, he gets his strike away and Dennis does well. Yeah, I don't really care if we do lose this 10-0 because, like, I think our cup final was the last game that we played against them last week. Free kick now. Anderson, he gets it on target, but Dennis with a fantastic save again. High with a good tackle. And thankfully, Calvert-Lewin was offside, so we will get the ball back. We made it outside the first 10 minutes without conceding, which is an improvement on last game. All right, 30 minutes in. Last time we used praise, everyone was overwhelmed. So I'm going to try to demand more this time uh, at the 30-minute mark. And everyone's f 
All right, so we made it into halftime at nil all. They've had 17 shots, 6 on target, 63% of the ball, so they're definitely improving at home. Max Moyer on 7.1 is their leading rating. Taylor Dennis continuing his fantastic form. We've had two shots, one on target, only 37% of the ball. So very little for either side in terms of highlights. We've got three yellow cards, which we're going to have to keep an eye on. And I think I'm also going to make a sub at halftime. So let's just say passionately. I know we're underdogs, but go on out there and give the fans a performance to cheer for. Everyone's responded confidently, which is great. I don't have a central midfielder to bring on for George Urie, but he's at 50% condition. Like, we can't let that continue. So we're going to move Rodriguez, who has okay technical attributes, into that box-to-box -box role, and Kiyembe will come in on the left wing. But really, we just need fresh legs. We've immediately got a highlight here. It's Meyer to take the corner. Away by Downing. If we can keep it in, Dick Thrash has got Keith Mir back stick if he can get him the ball. It's towards that direction now. He's brought it down, and what a goal that is. 21st goal of the season for Keith Mir. I don't know why I keep doing the home alone face, but what a strike that is. Crossfield switch from Dick Thrash, and he has smashed this into the top corner. Let's check it out in three dimensions. Oh, I wish that angle hadn't reversed, because it would have been awesome looking from here. Check out this ball across, and this first time volley from Keith Mir. Comes across his body, and he smacks it into the far post. Shades of Tim Cahill against Holland a couple of years ago. All right, so we're going now. We've got something to defend for the first time this series. They've got a free kick. Anderson to take. It comes back out to him again, and he smacked it straight in the back of the net. They gave me the briefest, the briefest little moment of hope there. It's a good goal. Anderson puts it against the wall the first time, and then as soon as it comes back out to him, he hits it again, and it's in off the post. So, like, just perfect finishing from Chris. All right, they've got a highlight here. We're going to look at subs in a moment. We need to get back to the pitch real quick. I don't need the... Uh, Bateman's coming forward at a pretty quick clip. It's a good tackle from O'Neill. Ball back to Fitzpatrick now. He can play it forward to Dick Thrash. He does it now. It's an overlapping run, but he ignores it. Back to Fitzpatrick again, who looks inside, but there wasn't really anything on. It's rebounded to him again, and he's kept the ball in. Long ball towards Dick Thrash. It's going to come out to Kiembe on the left wing. Dick Thrash again. Out to Kiembe, who's got space and time ahead of him. If he can find the right ball... Instead, it's a deep one, and Farinus does well to come out and claim. Is that the end of the highlight, or are we just coughing possession back up, and they're going to go right over our head? Warring's won it back, up the line to O'Neill. There's two men in the middle, if he can get a ball across early. Finds Keith Mir, and Dick Thrash is open, and with... Is he onside? 16th goal of the season. We've gone 2-1 up against the second team in the championship. An hour we're gone. Let's check that out in three minutes. In three... Through, blah, 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 blah. Three dimensions. It's a great bit of counter-attacking play. Keith Mir just holds the ball up really well, picks out the pass... Good off-the-ball movement from both Dick Thrash and Kiambe to get back stick in a 2v1. And that is an excellent goal. Where has all this been the entire season? Like, the amount of frustrating games where we've conceded two or three goals, and now we're actually holding a team at bay who's better than us, and we're making the most of our chances on the counter-attack. Football. All right, one quick sub after an hour. Ollie Chadwick will come on the right for O'Neill. O'Neill was excellent in the build-up to that second goal, but... I just want to get fresh legs out there, and we're going to keep the other sub up our sleeve because these two yellow cards to Hyman Rodriguez are obviously a massive concern, plus some of the fitness at the back, 60%, 66 75 62 like they're struggling for legs. So I just don't want to overcommit on that sub until we absolutely have to. Let's use Get Creative. Most have responded inspired. Downing has sponsored pressured. And no one has given up more mistakes for goals this season than Downing. So hopefully he can get his shit together and see out the remaining 25 minutes for perhaps the biggest result now. All right, it worked out for us in the last game. We brought on Ash Bolton for Keith Fitzpatrick. He's again struggling with the 6.5 and he's only at 59% condition. So hopefully that can be the last sub to push us through to get a result in the now, there is an immediate highlight here. The ball's back with Farinez. He's gone long towards Calvert-Lewin, who knocks it down well for Campbell, releases Nemecha. I think they've gone to two up top. Bateman with a deep ball across towards Calvert-Lewin, and thankfully, he's put under enough pressure by Norman that he just puts the header wide of far post. But they're definitely going to start pushing. And this is potentially going to be the longest 15 minutes of the season so far. Free kick from distance. Anderson, their goal scorer, puts it back stick, and Hefele, the centre-back, just pushes it wide. You can see they're really coming after it because uh, Calvert-Lewin was going after the ball. We're into the last 10, so we're just going to use our demand more shout again. I've been really ringing that one dry this game. 
Look at some of these match ratings for against championship opposition. Dennis, Waring, and Norman all on 7.3, 7.1, 7.1. Mir and Threkaj, who before that had been in a bit of a goal-scoring drought with the goals, 8.3 for Mir. Dick Thrash with an 8.1. And good to see them laying it on for each other as well, getting the assist. Even if we do go on to lose this game or it goes to extra time or whatever else. Like, such a big result. Such a big... Like, we needed this episode this season because this season had been such a yo-yo in terms of our form. It's been really a bit of a grind and a bit of a struggle to try and get through to the end. All right, there's four minutes to be added on. We're into additional time now. And Campbell, as I was saying, that just drives one. A rapier shot looked like it was going to hit the top corner but just slid wide at the end. Oh, two and a half more minutes, boys, for the most famous victory. Write it out with me, lads. Write it out in the comment section below. All right, we're into... We're now beyond where we should be for extra time. Just blow the whistle, referee. Come on, ref. We've given the ball back, and thank God for that. A wonderful strike by Richard Threkaz. Caps United's win. Even better than that was Keith Mears' goal, which was absolutely phenomenal. He'll get the Player of the Match award with an 8.3. James Anderson, their goal scorer, also with an 8.3. An excellent finish from him, putting it in off the woodwork. Six shots, four on target, 38% of the ball. They had everything... But I just want to get into the dressing room and passionately tell everybody. That was really special, lads. Nobody gave you a chance, but you played magnificently. Congratulations. And we have, that is probably the best result that we may potentially get in this season, in this entire series, to beat the team second in the championship with some of the talent they had, to have a $40 million player as their captain playing at the 10, and we kept in quiet over two legs. Which I guess means we're not going to jump ahead to the end of the season anymore. We're going to go and have a look at who we're going to be playing in the next round. Hashtag United shatter Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. A young Hashtag United side showed you can win with kids as they come out on top of much more. Forget that. Show me the comparison between the squad value. Like, we would be worth less than their worth player combined. James Anderson eventually got the player of the match award, but it's Keith Mir for me every time. And that is going to be massive, not just for the gate that we received. I think we received 150K, smashed our gate record in the first leg. The extra 155K, which we're going to get to in a second is absolutely huge for us and is going to go a long way to erasing a tremendous amount of our debt. Delighted with the result and the performance. Rui Faria is the old ex-Man United. And Chelsea assistant manager, he was the assistant for Mourinho for years. What a, like, just, I'm not even reading these questions. I'm just clicking the most positive response that I can see. And Dick Thrash finally breaks his goal-scoring drought. James Anderson only 21. Maybe we should look at when his contract's up. Not that we'll be able to afford his wages, but... 155k, that's going to help us tremendously. Where are our finances at? Okay, it looks like our end of month for January hasn't quite come through. We're still at negative 509. Oh, no, we're at negative 162. So there's going to be a big spike coming in a moment because of this stuff. And potentially, a game against Exeter, who are 22nd in League One, arguably a worse team than we've just beaten in Crystal Palace. There's potential that we may actually be able to get past them and into the fifth round of the FA Cup. We'll definitely come back for that game on the 25th of January, so we're only going to jump ahead a little bit. And old Dick Thrash, previously he'd gone 10 hours of competitive football before his 59th minute strike. Absolutely fantastic. Everybody's fucking knackered, but we're going to have to try and continue to push through and continue maintaining competition on two fronts. All right, so speaking of that, in the league, we're down into ninth spot, but we're only one point out of the top seven. We do actually have some space opening up in terms of our scheduling as well. A lot more games that are a week apart, like which up until this point of the season, we just we've had Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Tuesdays in there, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Like we now actually get to just Saturday fixtures, and the only midweek ones that we'll have are the rescheduled games in January due to our FA Cup movements. So really, if we get through to the start of Feb and through the next FA Cup game. Our season's going to open up for us a bit. We're just going to have games each weekend, full rest days. Everybody who's currently struggling for form and fitness will have the time to recover. We'll actually get training sessions in, so I'm hopeful that once we get to February, a lot of our results and the yo-yoing of our form will improve quite a bit because we're going to have more time. Oh, what a set of results, though. That is absolutely fantastic. I'm so thrilled with how that's gone. We could crash out and not win a game for the rest of the season, and I'd be really happy that we got that one massive fixture and that one massive result. Oh, well, two massive results, really. A 1-1 one -one with Crystal Palace and then a 2-1 win away from home. Absolutely fantastic. Help me celebrate, guys. Give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on future videos, including our next match against Exeter in the FA Cup. You can also follow us on in the mixer underscore FM on Twitter to be kept up to date. 
on all things Football Manager 2020 as more stuff is released. We've got voting at the moment for our beta save on the Twitter account as well. Go and check that out. We've also got our FM20 giveaway. There is a video on the main page where you can check out how you can win your very own copy. But more than anything, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I've been Sean. This has been In The Mixer. And don't ever forget to hashtag it.